determine the facts before you go into court so that judge has no say as to what the facts are and there are, is not here it is all established you take all sorts of power away from them because now all they can do is apply the law to the facts the purpose of that notary is so that when you go through the process you make your demand you have a witness who did it you have uh, when you serve your notice of understanding and intent and your claim of right you have a witness who did it since they have the power to generate, uh, if you look at my ID over there, it's a, uh, a photo affidavit. It's my photo on it, but it's an affidavit of a notary public. Establishing that I am a free man on the land, this is the name he knows me by, and I'm a pretty peaceful guy, and then and then. That notary public has as much power as any judge, anyone who issues any ID. Whatever your representatives can do, uh, that notary can do as well. The reason that he has a lot of power, if you just wanted to establish the facts, you could, if you wanted, use three people of good standing within your community. They, however, cannot craft a court order which the sheriff's deputies will respond to and will take as a court order and go seize property. They'll look at it and laugh. A notary's judgment, they act on. One of the things that's come up in Ontario is all the notaries are lawyers. Okay? Yeah. And it's a bit of an old boy network, and people have run into problems where they... Look, look through their act and find the word duty. Hold them to their duty. And if they refuse to do it, then again, there's always remedy. You serve on them a notice of understanding and intent and a claim of right. We hire firefighters to fight fires in our communities. If, however, they start refusing to fight the fire and your house is burning down and they say, ah, well, we're busy, we just don't want to do it. At what point in time did you ever give up your right to fight your own fire? You can serve a notice on them saying, listen, justice must be served. And this is what we're doing in BC. I'm setting up someone to act as a notary because there's nothing in the Notary Act that says only members of the Notary Society can provide notarial services. All it says is only these notaries can be governed by the Notary Society. You have all the power in the world. You can find someone to start providing these notarial services. And if they refuse to do it, I, I bring notice and claim against them. Where do I go to find confirmation that three is equal to number uh, Again, you're seeking confirmation. Why not make a claim to the notary and see if they dispute it? If they don't dispute it, there's your confirmation. Tell them. Is there a difference between a, a notary in the United States and a Canadian notary? And can they do equal? For terms? establishing what the facts are, no. But for generating a court order that the sheriffs will act upon if you wanted to go see someone's vehicle, yes. No one outside of Canada is going to generate an order that's going to bind these people. Then you can establish the truth with it, but that's about it. If one were to receive a presentment, uh, say roadside speeding ticket, uh, parking, seatbelt, whatever, what can be done in the first 72 hours to uh, end the matter? From what I found, it's all a transaction of a security interest. A, trans a, a transaction of a security interest is very much like a contract in the way that monopoly money is like money in your pocket. They don't call it a contract because it's not a contract. It can create obligations to either pay or perform just like a contract would, but they can't call it a contract because they're all de facto anyways. You have every remedy that would be available at, to you in the common law when it comes to contracts is available to you now when you're dealing with these transactions of a security interest and they require consent. It is evidence of you agreeing with them for whatever reason. Within that three days, you do have the power to rescind it. You send in a notice to them and you say, look, uh, no, I changed my mind. I'm not bound by it. And it is that easy. They don't like it, they might come after you and uh, doing what I've been doing, I went to jail like nine times, eh? I mean, they tried to intimidate me, they made me drop my pants, bend over and try to do a full cavity skirt search, held me over, you know, over a weekend and all of it just to see whether or not I would fold. They had no power, no right to do that, but I just left smiling and going, oh, I learned a lot about the way you do business. Wait till I tell people. 
if you keep it, they might, they might test you a couple of times, but again, once they see that you're doing it with the heart, not with the anger, and you're saying, oh, there's na 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 If you're just telling them, listen, I love Canada. This is my Canada. I don't like what you're doing. I'm following my heart, and I have these questions. People make mistakes when they deal with the cops because they tend to try to say, um, they, they try to make uh, declaratory statements where they say, you can't do that. This is a transaction of a security interest. You generate conflict right there. Always ask questions. Questions are evidence of a mind that is trying to discern, trying to distinguish. It must be recognized that if you're in, the law recognizes, if you're asking questions, it's evidence that you do not understand, that you're trying to, in order to serve the law. You step into the crap when you start making a declarative statement. You can, instead of saying, is that a transaction of a security interest, which empowers you, you say to the cop, that's a transaction of a security interest, and now you failed. And it's that simple. Always ask questions. And that's what I would do. You got three days, write them notice. Say, sorry, you scared me, you had a gun, and uh, I'm saying no to the transaction of a security interest. I claim I have a right to do so. If you don't believe I have a right to do so, please answer these questions. Na, 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 na. And you hit them with questions. 20 questions that they have to answer, and if they can't answer, they lose the ability to claim that they were acting lawfully. If they weren't acting lawfully, the demand is, is void ab initio. Uh, you say that there's differences, or there is differences, between Ontario law, BC law, and other places. There is no difference in the law. There is a difference in the statutes. Is there a book or uh, a source that you can interchange things, like the uh, cross-references? Uh, yeah, it's called your brain. <laughs> <laughs> There's no easy fix, buddy. You got it. To a large degree, understanding the law is like realizing that there's one picture you want to get to, and imagine a box, a, a puzzle. Now imagine a box of puzzles, and they have taken the pieces from this one puzzle, and they hit one here, one here, one here. You've got to assemble this box, this box, this box. See what pieces are left over, and then you do the other puzzle. Here's where it gets easy, though. Don't try studying the deception. You will spend your whole life studying the deception. It's the truth that is going to free you. The truth is kind of like a garden in a forest of deception. Find that garden, stand there, and you will come to the point where the deception doesn't affect you anymore. They're just people using words. Who are they? Who are you to hire them and empower them over me? It all rests on us saying, yes, okay. And you know what, what I see? When you were a kid, when we were kids, we all had the power to say something very empowering. And we lose it in high school somehow. Yeah. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> By the time you're done high school, oh yes, what do you want me to do? When do we lose that? Get to the point where you realize you're not the boss of me. Operate on that and see whether or not they can be the boss of you without your consent. It's common law jurisdiction. How can I be your boss without your consent? How can I hire anyone to be your boss without your consent? How can I create a body of words, call it law, and then apply it to you and use it to extract pretty much half your life's energy if it's not with your consent? David Icke. <laughs> Since Canada is registered as a corporation with the SEC, uh, wouldn't it be better to go to the SEC to claim your shares rather than the Minister of Finance? Mm, no, because the SEC isn't bound by Section 337, whereas the Minister is. You could certainly gum up their gears, and they are an organization that I would make aware of the demand. And a good, good eye on that, I think we'll add that if it's not already there, but I think they're being served already on that demand. So that they know, hey, halt all trading and all, all everything on this, pending the resolution of this. 
But the SEC, you can't throw in jail for 13 or 14 years if they refuse to give it. <laughs> You're not a shareholder yet, you're a share owner. Well, okay, but once you get to that point, to let them know, okay, if there's any um, votes that need to be done on uh, the shareholder, you know, for whatever it is that you have to vote for, that they give you notice. Well, they have to. That's, uh, that's a function of law. Okay. Once you're the shareholder, they have to do that. Uh, what I'm expecting is my security and a list of all the transactions, everything that uh, from, from day one of its creation and existence. I want full and complete accounting.